And I'm Anisha Mahara here. Amnesia, BPD amnesia, verbal abuse, and and the way that partners of those with BPD get victimized. Or is this really amnesia? And just because somebody coins the phrase on YouTube, borderline personality disorder amnesia, they go on to then explain it in inaccurate lens. Because people with BPD are really largely not experiencing BPD amnesia as a strategy or BPD amnesia because they're just busy in their head and they're not listening to you. But, but all of this is explained in a much more accurate way than to say, just, you know, go along. Like people like to try to be trendsetters and, and start new memes. And the thing is that that's irresponsible to people's understanding and the narrative of what borderline personality really is and why do they really do what they do and how does it affect you and what are you experiencing? It will serve you best in your own healing recovery journey to the extent that people with codependency have to keep focusing on the borderline, the borderline X, the untreated borderline. It will serve you best to have an accurate understanding of borderline personality disorder from a really actual, correct context, construct, and framework. What can so willy-nilly be forwarded as somebody's exciting moment of inaccuracy to coin a term BPD amnesia, which is erroneous and highly inaccurate, you might think, well, it fits though because you can come up with all kinds of reasons. But here's the thing. People with untreated borderline personality, especially, and some with not yet significantly enough treated BPD. So a lot of people out there with BPD are definitely going to do anything and everything to defend themselves in a way that obfuscates personal responsibility. So that's the biggest other reason, along with dissociation, why you can't get a straight answer out of them, why they keep coming back why the beginning of the Jade quote conversations over and over and over again has nothing to do with any form or type of amnesia in BPD. And if there's anything else out there, I'll continue to look and I'll let you know, but there is nothing substantiated right now. There's nothing established. And more to the point, I would posit that research I've read so far, not from North America, but looks at the reality of what are the dangers and effects of psychiatric medication that might be interfering with some of the repetition, compulsion, reenactment of trauma cycles or what's really driving everything that people with untreated BPD do. And they do it from an unconscious place to begin with. Quote, BPD amnesia, unquote, is not accurate to what's going on at all. The accurate lens for the understanding of borderline personality is trauma-based, and then what happens relationally is driven largely, if untreated, from the, the subconscious mind, and it is repetition, compulsion, cycles of reenactment of trauma, when they're triggered to dysregulated emotion and some degree or other of dissociation. And this is severe reaction and reenactment of traumatization has nothing to do with, quote, BPD amnesia, unquote. And so for people to just come out and coin things and make it seem all cutesy, and it's what a lot of you really want to hear. And here's the other thing, complex traumatization. Borderline symptoms are similar to, common, to the commonly known consequences of early, severe, and chronic traumatization. Various experts have proposed that borderline symptoms, in other words, the frickin' borderline personality disorder, should be classified as disorders of stress, of extreme stress. Disorders of extreme stress not otherwise specified to keep it separate from complex post-traumatic stress disorder, which in fact, you know, hey, with one delineation. And who proposes D-E-S-N-O-S? -S? Well, Vandercock, Roth, 
Pelkovitz, Sunday and Spinoza in 2005. Then they say, disorders of extreme stress not otherwise specified, also known as post-traumatic stress disorder, complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Herman, 1992, and Klassen et al., 2006. So I don't know why people love the information that is erroneous, but again, it's not about amnesia in BPD. BPD amnesia is not what you're dealing with, and it's important that you know that in a way, I guess, but then again, like people really need to understand what's really going on with people with BPD. And to my understanding of people that leave comments on my channel that I've interacted with on live streams and worked with as clients for over 30 years, people want a real understanding of what BPD really is. Well, that's what I'm here explaining to you right now. And it's clinical knowledge, clinical history, studying the studies, reading the studies and the textbooks. So for a YouTuber to just coin the phrase BPD amnesia, I would say is highly irresponsible. So amnesia in general refers to a loss of memories, you know, like loss of facts or information and experiences that come into plots in movies, right? But that's not generally the case in real life. Amnesia in real life is also called amnesiatic syndrome, but that's aside from anything that's going on in BPD. So what could be going on in BPD? Well, first of all, it's not really amnesia at all. Because more to the point, as I've stated here over and over, and I'll continue to do these videos over and over, is it is borderline repetition compulsion cycles based on trauma. And that's why everything that is so relationally impossible about BPD and, and being with somebody with untreated borderline personality is the case. So to say that they have amnesia, and that's the reason that you're experiencing what you experience, if they continually re-ask you questions because they want to do this and they want to start this argument and they want to do that and they want to do the next thing. No, it's not really that because it's not planned like that. This idea that BPD amnesia, to put BPD and then the word amnesia after it, like they belong together. So, and, and how many of you really experience that the person with BPD asks you the same questions over and over again versus that they make accusations. Usually there are a lot of people with BPD untreated, especially their assertions or their communications with you are not going to usually be, hey, by the way, what'd you say yesterday? What'd you say last Tuesday? It's usually just straight up accusations based on past conversations or based on many of the traits of what BPD actually is. So are they fearing abandonment? Are they feeling engulfment fear? Is it a lack of sense of identity? Whatever, is, is it their impulsivity? Is it, is it they're feeling really bad and they want to engage with you and they don't know how, so they'll do that in a negative way because negative engagement is still getting your attention in the same way as positive engagement would be, and yet they're used to negative engagement. Why? Because underpinning all this is trauma. Underpinning all this is the repetition compulsion cycle in borderline personality disorder. It doesn't have anything to do with, quote, BPD amnesia, unquote, because repetition compulsion cycles means reenactment of trauma in a dissociative way. So this idea that they're just going to ask you all these questions to set you up with your answers, that they're trying to look for loopholes and that they have this amnesia. Like if they had amnesia, how could they come back to you to ask you about a conversation that you had a day ago or two days ago or a week ago? And how is it if people with BPD have so much quote amnesia unquote, because they don't, um, how is it that they have amnesia when where you're justifying, arguing, defending, and explaining, and they're coming at you. Sure, they're trying to poke holes in what you're saying, but the reason isn't, quote, BPD amnesia. That is so simplistic. That is so erroneous. That is so off the narrative. That's just somebody trying to frame it in some cool way to make it more like what people want to hear. But the bottom line is, 
if they had amnesia, if BPD was really this amnesia deal, even transient or off and on, which it really isn't either, then how come when, when there is an argument underway, whatever happened, whoever started, whatever the reason, and people will have many, many, many arguments with an untreated person with borderline personality, and they will be repetitive as all get out of here, but not because they've forgotten things. Okay, so there's dissociation and there's lack of clarity sometimes, but more to the point, they don't know who they are and they don't want to take any responsibility. They want to obfuscate that and they're going to externalize out their triggered, dysregulated emotions onto you. So then there can be this turnabout, but it's not, it's not generated by BPD amnesia or how would they remember to do it? So when they come at you again, usually it's not question asking, it could be, but usually it's accusation firing, not in that quote forever ammunition that I think someone else mentioned who coined this term inaccurately as all get out of here on YouTube, BPD amnesia. It's cute, but it's so highly inaccurate, it matters greatly. What's really known is that 80% minimum of people with BPD have been really traumatized in childhood, okay? So there's trauma underlying all of this. That goes to the repetition compulsion cycles of the reenactment of that trauma, which is triggered and then experienced dissociatively from the past in the here and now. This is what drives so much of what people with BPD do. Doesn't speak to all the reasons why. Might not seem like it's what you're experiencing, but what you're experiencing, this is the root of it for real because it's an erroneous narrative altogether. So my other point would be, so when you're in these jade conversations or these conflicts, these arguments, person with BPD, untreated especially, likely starts them more often than not. Why do they do that? Because they're trying to manage approach avoidance conflict. They are have extreme stress and difficulty being close to anyone, can't stay close to anyone, etc. So that's what's going on for them, period, whether they're aware of it, because they're not usually consciously aware of it. I'm not trying to excuse any of their behavior that gets abusive or, you know, like, and they're generating arguments, etc. due to trauma reenactment of repetition compulsion cycles. And yeah, they're trying to obfuscate their responsibility. They only see your side of things not theirs. But that's not amnesia. That is the dissociation factor, which doesn't even go to amnesia at that point either. People with BPD in the trauma reenactment known as repetition compulsion cycles, when they come to you, whether they're asking questions or like I said, they'll probably rather be more often than not accusing you. And if they want to reiterate a conversation from yesterday or two days ago or a week ago or months ago, well, how could they have amnesia if they're bringing the conversation back up? More to the point, I don't think they usually do that. They just make accusations. So the point is, then you're in the argument. Then you're, you know, you're being triggered. You're being provoked. You don't know what's going on. None of it makes any sense in here and now to the person on the other side of the person with BPD, whether you know, you're, you're a codependent, as generally most people are, who are closer and close relationships or especially partner relationships with somebody with BPD. The person with BPD will usually sling accusations more than ask questions, number one. Number two, where is the BPD, quote, amnesia, which is a misnomer and doesn't exist as such, where is the BPD amnesia when, you know, you, you're, so they start, accusing you of stuff or asking you questions, whichever, it's probably accusations. And you're like, I don't, I, I don't know what you're talking, I don't remember, or, you know, like, and you're not sure what, what the heck are they going on about? What, what, why this, why now? It doesn't make any logical sense, right? So it's totally coming from their emotions, coming more importantly from repetition, compulsion, reenactment cycles that are unconscious and untreated borderlines. They don't have a clue why they're doing what they're doing, but this is what they're doing. So how come in those arguments and those conflicts, and you probably experienced this, so ask yourself this, if you want to believe another YouTuber's narrative about, oh, I'm going to coin the term BP amnesia. It doesn't make any sense. Don't they often give you their version of more accusations against you, twisting around reality even more because they're in a dissociative, triggered, dysregulated emotional state has nothing to do with amnesia, then it can do with a little bit of, it It can have to do with a little bit of lack of clarity. But don't they often just stockpile things? 
Like, don't they just, yeah, but you know, five years ago you said this, last Tuesday you said that. What about the time that you did this? And what about whether you did it or not, right? What about the time you said this? What about the time you said that? What about the time you didn't do this? What about, and they can be referencing back as long as you've known them. Could be 25, 30 years, could be two years, could be two months, could be three years, five years. Where's the amnesia in that? I wonder, huh? Yeah, because quote BPD amnesia forwarded, like it's the reason for why they're going to come back to you, whether it's questioning, which is not often the case, but with the accusations, nonsense. And, you know, I, it, it gets me when people forward things that they might have some accuracy in some of what they say, but then they want to coin a phrase and they just stick together BPD amnesia and then they just go on like it's real. It's not. And clearly, although the person that did this has, you know, a lot of important information about BPD, they don't understand the depth of it by a long shot. The conflict generated, it's not usually them asking you questions. It could be, it's usually accusations and they're coming back to it. So it's not because they have amnesia. No, no, no. And, and for all the different reasons why they're going to do this to you, it's also not calculated or planned because they don't know what they're looking for. They're looking for you to be wrong so they can be righter, so they can feel safe again, so they can feel okay again, which isn't justified. I'm just giving the explanation. So this idea then that this will often lead to verbal abuse, well, yeah, of course, because they're angry in the first place. And I'm not saying, when I say, of course, I don't mean that that's okay, but the point is they are already triggered to dysregulated emotion, which is flooding the rest of their brain, which it would do to anybody. And they are reliving in the here and now dissociative trauma from the past. And from that lens, nothing to do with amnesia there, ladies and gentlemen, from that lens, then they're already whipped up inside and they don't know why if they're untreated with BPD. So they're going to externalize it out to you. And then they're going to, you know, definitely probably in the back and forth because you're confused and you're like, what? And you're just trying to walk on the eggshells and you're trying maybe not to have it. Like you're trying to make it stop. And it's like, and you can't, and what are you supposed to do? And you know what? There are no magical answers there. And then they might start yelling or they might do the silent treatment and walk away, depending. And But they might start yelling, and they might get very verbally abusive. And there's no excuse for that, right? And you're still sitting there like a deer in the headlights going like, where did all this come from? What? What? Because I didn't say, and I didn't do, and why do they think this? And then th that can be very, um, of course, injurious to you, because then you're doubting yourself, and especially if you have codependency, and more to the point if you have more severe codependency. So with this, then it can lead to verbal abuse. Yes. And then what, but people with BPD are just as reactionary as are people with codependency, their partners or exes or whatever relationship type. Here's the thing. So they're highly reacting to dissociative re-experiencing of the trauma of childhood and maybe in between, negative lens, negative perception, fear of abandonment, impulsivity, not amnesia in there, but all these other things. And then as soon as they provoke you, and maybe they're not trying to consciously on purpose provoke you, maybe they are, maybe they aren't, not always the same, but then you get angry, you get frustrated, understandable, you know, because you're like, what the hell? And you you want some logic and you know, like this can go on for hours, day after day, really sometimes. So you, you might get angry and you might yell back and you might be like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Like, you know, I didn't win, whatever the case might be. Right. And then, so when you do that, then the first thing they do is play the victim card. But guess what? When people call people with untreated borderline personality or just say borderlines in general are the professional victims. You know, well, the fact is right then and there, they're still in a triggered emotional dissociative alternate reality of sorts. They're not in the here and now with you. They're not in any of the logic that you're trying to bring to this chaotic situation. The thing to know about that is that when you yell at them, then Okay, it's not like they set this whole thing up to end up being the victim. 
But 80% of people diagnosed with borderline personality disorder were traumatized in childhood. That doesn't always mean just sexual abuse or physical abuse. It is the attachment trauma, the core wound of abandonment trauma that goes with attachment trauma. It could be something else experienced in young childhood, very subjective to a person with a highly sensitive temperament that might not even have bothered a sibling that came from a parent, and but it could be traumatic for that person. So trauma has a wider scope than what a lot of people ascribe to it and think about it. So this BPD amnesia stuff is crazy, and I don't know why people keep doing this. I guess I don't think the person that did this is desperate for views. So what's up with this? Because it's just wrong. It's just inaccurate. And if there is anything to talk about, about any amnesia in BPD, it's not coming from a place of, quote, BPD amnesia. There is really no such thing. So there can be dissociation. There's their core, there's their re-experiencing of trauma, the repetition compulsions, reenactment of trauma cycles. Yeah, they're going to get abusive in those. And there's, you know, there's no excuse for abuse. And then they're going to be trying to provoke you. Why? Not because of you, not because of the here and now, but still you're the one experiencing it. They're going to be having this argument with you as object other parent representation of the devalued wounding parent or the experienced as devaluing wounded parent. So it isn't even about you, but you're in it. And more to the point, when you're in it and you know what it is, why are you still there putting up with it? Because you can't change it, can't stop it, can't help it. You know, so that's another part. As soon as you react, if you get, re you know, if you react to the person with BPD who's in this triggered, emotional dysregulated, somewhat dissociated place, which doesn't go into other disorders, it's within what borderline personality is known as and defined as, then of course, the, as soon as you yell at them or you have a response or you just vehemently disagree, they're going to feel invalidated. And then when they act like a victim, they're not acting like a victim. They feel victimized just like you do. But you didn't necessarily victimize them. It depends how angry you got, though, because maybe you were abusive too. Yeah, but I'm just saying that they're not professional victims. There are people that are still in in trauma reenactment of repetition compulsion cycles, experiencing the victimization of their past over and over again in the here and now and externalizing it out onto you. So what in the hell does that have to do with amnesia or quote BPD amnesia? Nothing, absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, if it was amnesia, they wouldn't even remember to bring the conversation back up. They wouldn't remember the cycles of what you've talked about over perhaps years. They wouldn't be able to come at you with their stockpiled anger. So, so some of that is very personal and, and about the situation, but they're still really mounting this chaos and drama and abuse and defense and accusation and everything toward you because they are replicating the experience of past unresolved trauma that's in their subconscious. So there, there's no like memory loss, like quote amnesia at work there. I believe in the most accurate, a clearer explanation of what really is driving what you're going through on the other side of somebody with BPD. And they're not professional victims, but they are victims in 80% of cases of trauma. And they are reliving it in a dissociative way when it's triggered. Never mind BP amnesia, that's not the reason. If you want a deeper understanding of borderline personality and what happened with that person that you may still be with or that is your ex, then yeah, I mean, that's what I'm here to provide you. And my information is accurate and it is in depth and it doesn't just skip over this, that, and the other thing. And I'm not here to coin any phrases, ladies and gentlemen. I am using well-researched clinical understanding and knowledge of borderline personality. So I hope that was helpful. Take care.